Honorable Minister of Finance, Marinka Gums, members of the media, radio listeners via Simartinga, Radio 107.9 FM, Telem Tell TV Plus, Channel 15, respective radio stations island-wide, and online viewers. I'm Rolika Roach, and welcome to this press conference on the clarification of the 90 million guilders for capital investments for today, Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. At this time, I would like to invite the Honorable Minister of Finance, Marinka Gums, to address you. Minister Gums, you have the floor. Thank you, Rolika, members of the press, and to the people of St. Martin, good afternoon. To the members of the press present, allow me to thank you for accepting my invitation, where I will be addressing and bringing clarity on the 90 million guilders received from the Netherlands for capital investments. Country St. Martin has received the amount of 90 million guilders specifically designated for our capital expenditures, CAPEX. However, I understand that it may not be clear about what CAPEX entails and how it differs from operational expenses, expenditures, OPEX. I strongly believe in being transparent and providing clarity to the St. Martin citizens, hence why I would like to take this opportunity to clarify these concepts and explain how the funds of 90 million guilders are to be allocated. Understanding CAPEX and OPEX, capital expenditures refer to funds used by an organization or government to acquire, upgrade, and maintain physical assets such as property, government building, or equipment. CAPEX is aimed at long-term investments that will benefit the country for many years, such as infrastructure projects, new schools, hospital, and transportation system. Hence, having these 90 million guilders to be able to execute these projects is a good start to the much needed investment to be made on St. Martin. In contrary to capital expenditures, these are operational expenditures, OPEX, which are funds related to the day-to-day -day functioning of an organization or government. This includes expenses such as rent, utilities, and maintenance costs. In addition to those, you have your payroll-related expenses, and these other expenses ensures that our current operational operations run smoothly and efficiently. Allocation of the funds received. The 90 million guilders is solely to be used for capital expenditures and not to cover any operational costs of the country. Hence my remark during the press briefing when I said that it was stated by former MP William Marlin that a robust coffer was left referring to the 90 million. Indeed, 90 million was left. However, I want to be very transparent to the public as to what this 90 million is for. This information can be found in the budget, which has been published for the year 2024. However, this is a big file, and it might not be easy to find the information you're looking for. Hence, my reasoning for providing this clarification. In addition, my intent is also to bring back the summarized budget for the public, which will give the public a quicker view and insight into the country's finances. The 90 million guilders can be broken down as follows. 7.2 million financed by the Netherlands for phase one of the prison, and this was for research phase. 5.8 million for a much needed new ERP software system financed by the Netherlands via the TWO. 16.2 million for a new tax system financed by the Netherlands via the TWO. And lastly, 60.8 million was received for various projects financed via a loan provided to the country to be repaid over a 20-year period with an interest rate of approximately 3%. At this time, I will go further into detail about the projects to be financed via the 60 million guilder loan, which was received in November 2023. The capital investments to be financed by the 60 million guilders are across most ministries. Each ministry will use these funds for specific capital investment projects. These projects will enhance our infrastructure, improve public service, and ultimately contribute to the economic growth of our nation. And it starts with the High Councils of State, $40,000 for a vehicle. General Affairs, 
2.2 million guilders for hard and software for ICT, vehicles for the Dev Department, DCOM, and ministers. Finance, 136,000 and 67 guilders, and that's for the canteen for the receiver's office. After the hurricane of 2017, the devastation caused to the receiver's office, and in particular the canteen, with this now being budgeted, the canteen area can now be restored. Justice, 4.2 million. That goes towards technical application for immigration, which is a system that can manage and secure its day-to-day -day services, allowing faster passenger processing, encompassed with a three-layer passport verification, also providing history details of passengers, face recognition, and risk of forgery of national documents. There are also vehicles allocated for the Department of Have Bay, that's five. Immigration gets three. Um, there's also vehicles for CAPSM, two vehicles for the Lancer de Charge, and furniture for the Immigration Border Protection Department, which is to mitigate neck, back, and shoulder complaints, as well as optimizing sitting positions through adjusted support, overall, overall promoting of good health. Education, 7.2 million guilders. It goes towards hardware and software for the education department for public schools to enable the better use of ICT innovation. Digital tracking software school bus transportation for managing student transport, which will lead to cost savings. The roofing for the Dr. Martin Luther King School playground. Besides the right to education, every child has the right to rest play and participate in cultural or creative activities. Upgrading of sports facility, in particular, the Raul Illich Sports Complex, which is being used by more than 2,500 athletes and students in its current deplorable condition. Unfortunately, the facility does not meet the minimum standards to qualify in hosting regional or international tournaments. Sports tourism cannot be pursued in this current state. Construction for the John Lamini Center, renovation and expansion, with a focus primarily on the development of the visual and performing arts in the area, as well as training a new generation of theater professionals. Prince Willem Alexander School, phase one, which started in 2016-2017, but was halted due to Hurricane Irma. This is now to commence phase two in order for the students who have special needs and require special attention can be reinstated in an environment suitable to cater to their special needs. NIPA, additional space is necessary for NIPA's growth and expansion, which includes the administration office, student engagement center with cafeteria, nursing simulation lab, and the culinary and hospitality services. Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Traffic and Transportation, 5.9 million. Six vehicles inspection, the marketplace, meeting area and taxi holding phase one, aims to provide retail spaces for food industry, entrepreneurs, revitalize Phillipsburg and stimulate e economic activity. Investment in intellectual property tourism, tourism product development and improvement. Ministry of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment, and Infrastructure, 41 million guilders. And that goes to the main roads resurfacing, hard surfacing of dirt roads, upgrading of the P Prince Bernard Bridge, Dutch Quarter Road Development, expansion of sewage network co-financed by the NRPB, and the Netherlands for the wastewater management. That's the total 60 million guilders. The remaining 30 million is a grant to the country with specific conditions attached to its usage based on agreements with the government of the Netherlands. This grant is earmarked for predetermined projects and initiatives of which I will reiterate. And they go to the reform and purchase of a new ICT tax system, implementation of the ERP software system, and prison phase one research. 
It is important to understand why the 90 million gilders cannot be diverted to cover operational expenses, such as salary increases or payments to creditors. And here are five key reasons. First of all, we have a purpose restriction. The funds are specifically designated for capital projects. Diverting them to operational expenses would violate the terms of the funding agreement and could jeopardize future funding opportunities. Long-term benefits. CapEx investments are intended to provide long-term benefits and enhance our national infrastructure. Three, financial discipline. Adhering to the designated use of funds promotes financial discipline and accountability. It ensures that we use our researches, resources I'm sorry, efficiently and for their intended purposes, maintaining the trust of our funding partners and the public. Number four, sustainability. Investing in capital projects supports sustainable development. These investments can generate economic growth, create jobs, and improve public services, whereas using the funds for short-term operational costs would not have the same lasting impact. And five, compliance and transparency. By strictly adhering to the agreed upon allocation of funds, we demonstrate our commitment to transparency and good governance. This builds confidence among our international partners and citizens, showing that we are managing public funds responsibly. The spending of these funds must, of course, also adhere to the procure to pay process within government. Furthermore, the previous government committed to implementing specific measures to secure loans necessary to cover the country's expenses during the COVID-19 pandemic, resulting in the so-called land packet or country package for St. Martin. One of these measures involved a significant reduction in the government's operational costs. In conclusion, the 90 million guilders received will significantly enhance our nation's infrastructure and public service through targeted capital projects and cannot be allocated to cover operational expenses. To date, an amount of approximately 4.5 million guilders was used of the 60 million guilders. Each ministry is responsible for drafting the necessary advices, making the necessary publications to use the funds which are allocated to their ministry for capital investments in accordance with the internal procure to pay process. The government, this government, remains committed to utilizing these resources effectively to ensure the continued growth and development of our country. And as Minister of Finance, I commit to being transparent and keeping you updated on the usage of these funds. Thank you for your understanding and your attention. Honorable Minister of Finance, members of the media, radio listeners and online viewers, this brings us to the end of this press conference for today, Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. For a rebroadcast, tune into stmartingov.org, St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM, Telem Cell TV Plus Channel 15, respective radio stations island-wide, the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin, and YouTube channel Government of St. Martin. For video on demand, log on to the Government of St. Martin's YouTube channel. On behalf of the Department of Communication and the Government of St. Martin, I'm Rolika Roach. Mm -hmm.